forests and wildlife resources we share our planet with many living beings from tiny organisms like bacteria and lichens to big ones like banyan trees elephants and blue whales this entire living space is full of different types of plants animals and organisms which is called biodiversity humans along with other living things are part of a big interconnected system known as the ecological system we depend on this system for our survival for example plants animals and microorganisms helps keep the air clean for us to breathe makes the water pure for us to drink and makes the soil healthy to grow our food forests are very important in this system because they are the primary producers that support all other living beings biodiversity biodiversity or biological diversity includes a vast variety of wildlife and cultivated species these species differ in shape size and role but are all connected through a network of interdependencies in the ecosystem flora and fauna in india india is one of the richest countries in the world when it comes to biodiversity there are many species already known but there could be twice or even three times as many still waiting to be discovered you have learned about the varieties of forests and wildlife in india and their importance in our daily life these plants and animals are such a natural part of our lives that we often take them for granted however they are now facing serious threats due to a lack of care and sensitivity towards the environment conservation of forest and wildlife in india conservation has become very important because wildlife and forests are disappearing fast but why do we need to conserve them conservation helps maintain ecological balance and supports essential systems like clean water air and soil it also protects the genetic variety of plants and animals which helps in better growth and breeding of species for example in farming we still depend on traditional crop varieties and fisheries rely on healthy aquatic biodiversity in the 1960s and 1970s people started asking for a national plan to protect wildlife in 1972 the indian wildlife protection act was passed to protect habitats and endangered species a list of protected species was made and hunting was banned governments set up national parks and wildlife sanctuaries for conservation special projects were launched to save endangered animals like tigers one horned rhinoceros kashmir stags which are called as hangulls crocodiles both freshwater saltwater and gharials asiatic lions and more recently animals like the indian elephant black buck that is chinkara great indian bustard godawan and snow leopard have also been given legal protection these laws prevent hunting and trading of these animals to save them from extinction project tiger tigers are a key species in the animal food chain by 1973 india's tiger population had dropped to just 1827 from an estimated 55000 at the start of the century tigers faced many threats like poaching shrinking habitats less prey and growing human populations their skins and bones were heavily traded especially for traditional medicines in asian countries pushing them closer to extinction since india and nepal are home to about 2/3 of the world's tigers population they became major targets for illegal hunting and trade in 1973 project tiger was launched as one of the most well known wildlife conservation programs the project aimed to save tigers from extinction and also protect large ecosystems where they live some famous tiger reserves in india include corbett national park uttarakhand sundarbans national park west bengal Bandavgarh National Park Madhya Pradesh 
Sariska Wildlife Sanctuary Rajasthan, Manas Tiger Reserve Assam and Piriya Tiger Reserve Kerala. Status of Conservation Projects Conservation projects now focus on protecting all types of biodiversity, not just a few species. Efforts are being made to find new ways to conserve different species. Even small creatures like insects are now part of conservation plans. In the Wildlife Act, updates of 1980 and 1986, hundreds of insects like butterflies, moths, beetles and one dragonfly were given protection. In 1991, Plants were added to the protected list for the first time, starting with six species. Types and distribution of forest and wildlife resources Conserving India's forests and wildlife is difficult to manage and regulate. Most of the forest and wildlife resources in India are owned or managed by the government through the forest department. Forests in India are divided into three main categories. One. Reserved Forests More than half of India's forest land is reserved forests. These are considered the most important for conserving forests and wildlife. 2. Protected Forests About one-third of the forest area is protected forest. These areas are protected from further damage. 3. Unclassed Forests These include forests and wastelands owned by the government private individuals or communities. Reserved and protected forests are called permanent forest estates. They are maintained for timber production, forest produce and environmental protection. Now let's see the key facts about forest areas in India. Madhya Pradesh has the largest permanent forest area that is 75% of its total forest land. States like Jammu and Kashmir, Andhra Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, West Bengal and Maharashtra have a large percentage of reserved forests. States like Bihar, Haryana, Punjab, Himachal Pradesh, Odisha and Rajasthan have more protected forests. Northeastern states and parts of Gujarat have a high percentage of unclassed forests managed by local communities. Community and Conservation Conservation is not a new concept in India. Forests are home to traditional communities and in many places, these communities work with the government to protect them. For example, in the Sariska Tiger Reserve in Rajasthan, villagers used the Wildlife Protection Act to fight against mining. In Alwar, Rajasthan, five villages declared 1,200 hectares of forest as Bairodev Dakao. Sonchuri means setting their own rules to protect wildlife and banning hunting. The Chipko movement in the Himalayas successfully stopped deforestation and showed the value of planting native trees. So, traditional conservation methods and eco-friendly farming are gaining popularity. Beej Bachao Andolan in Tehri and Navdanya promote chemical-free diversified crop farming which is sustainable and profitable. The Joint Forest Management JFM program started in Odisha in 1988. Local communities protect degraded forests in partnership with the forest department. In return, they get benefits like non-timber forest produce and a share of harvested timber. The key takeaway is that local communities must play a central role in managing natural resources. Development activities should focus on being people-friendly, environment-friendly and economically sustainable. There is still a long way to go to involve communities in major decision-making. Sacred groves, a wealth of diverse and rare species. Nature worship is an ancient tribal belief that teaches us to protect all creations of nature. This belief has helped preserve some forests in their pure form known as sacred groves, that is forests dedicated to gods and goddesses. These forests are left untouched and locals strictly avoid any interference with them. Some communities worship specific trees and have protected them from generations. The Mundas and Santals of Chota Nagpur worship Mahua and Kadamba trees. Tribals in Odisha and Bihar worship Tamarind 
and mango trees especially during weddings trees like people and banyan are considered sacred by many indian society with its diverse cultures has many traditional ways of conserving nature sacred springs mountain peaks plants and animals are highly respected and protected at temples animals like macaques and langurs are treated as part of the community and fed regularly in bishnoi villages of rajasthan animals like black buck nilgai and peacocks live peacefully with the people as harming them is strictly forbidden let us conclude this lesson with the quotation given by gautama buddha the tree is a peculiar organism of unlimited kindness and benevolence and makes no demand for its sustenance and extends generously the products of its life activity it affords protection to all beings offering shade even to the axmen who destroys it thanks for watching please like the video please share this video with your friends please subscribe to great booster channel press the bell icon to get all the latest updates check the description to find links of other useful videos check the end screens for our new videos